Hey guys, this is K0MRD, your radio prepper, <clears throat> and I'm here to talk about the last of the non-licensed communication services that you know, people can use for uh, SHCF communications. And this time we're talking about good old CB, Citizens Band Radio. Those of us that are older will remember the CB craze in the 1970s and 80s with Smokey and the Snowman riding a Texarkana, trying to get some adult beverages for their friends, or even Rubber Duck leading a thousand screaming trucks across the U.S. in, it, in that great movie, Convoy. All the while, they're communicating with CB. As fun as those movies are, the reality is, CB for SHTF, or Prepper Comms, is... CB is still very viable, okay? I'm going to give you some information from the FCC's website, and I'm going to go into my use of Citizens Band Radio. Okay, Citizens Band Radio Service is a private two-way short-distance communication service for personal or business activities of the general public. That's you and me and everybody else. It may also be used for voice paging. It is authorized for 40 channels between 26.965 MHz and 27.405 MHz. That's the 11 meter band. This service, in, service includes the general mobile radio service, according to the FCC. CB, the CB service provides a service for short distance communication by individuals and businesses. Over the years, changes have occurred to the service, such as adding additional channels. It used to be 20 channels, and then they bumped it up to 40. However, the purpose of the service has remained the same. There are 40 channels, and again, they go from 26.965 all the way down <clears throat> to 27.405 in the 11 meter band. Anyone, regardless of age, can operate a CB station except for a foreign government. A representative of a foreign government, a federal government agency, or someone who has received an FCC cease and desist order is, that is still in effect. So if the FCC told you you can't use CB, you can't use it. Plain and simple. Anyone is eligible to operate a CB station for personal or business use in accordance with the rules. And again, since this is not an SHTF situation, the rules and laws still apply. An individual license is not required to operate a CB station, and the FCC does not review, renew formally issued CB radio service licenses. Okay? The FCC rules for the Citizens Band Radio Service are located in 47 CFR Part 95. Operating a Citizens Band device. You may operate a transmitter at any location where the FCC regulates radio communications subject to certain restrictions. Okay? Basically, anywhere in the U.S. you can operate a, a radio service you can operate a CB so long as you don't cause harmful interference to other people. A CB, may, CB transmitter must be certified by the FCC. Transmitters that have not been certified for use in the CB radio service, I'm sorry, transmitters that have been certified for use in the CB radio service may be found on the FCC website and I'll put the link in the description below. None of the CB channels are assigned for exclusive use of any station. You must cooperate with in the selection and use of your channels in order to make the most efficient use of them and reduce the possibility of interference. Again, this is a gentleman's agreement. Yeah. So, if you're using a CB, then you have to be nice about it. <clears throat> there are several additional things to consider when using a CB, including you may not raise the power 
uh, power output of the CB transmitter. You may not attach a linear amplifier or any other type of power amplifier to a trans, uh, CB transmitter. There are no height restrictions for antennas mounted on vehicles or for handheld devices. For structures, like your house if you have a base station, <coughs> The highest point your antenna must not be more than 20 feet above the highest point of the building or a tree in which it is mountain, mounted or 60 feet above the ground. There are lower height limits if your antenna structure is located within 2 miles of an airport. You can use an on-air pseudonym or a handle of your own choosing. You must at all times and on all channels give priority to emergency traffic okay <clears throat> here's some channels of note channel 3 26.985 is the prepper CB network and that's on AM <clears throat> channel 4 is the American preppers network Channel 9 <clears throat> is the Universal CB Emergency React Channel. Channel 19 is the Main Trucker Channel. Channel 36 is the Survivalist Network. Channel 37 is Prepper 37 Upper Sideband. See, CB has, you know, you can go Lower Sideband, Upper Sideband, or AM. So, if you have... If you have a unit that allows you to switch between the two, keep that in mind. All this information comes from the SHTF blog site, and I'll put a link in their, descri uh, their link in the description below. You can pick up a CB transmitter, you know, anywhere from forty bucks to four hundred dollars for the great big, very nice ones. Um, with all the bells and whistles and Roger beeps and all of that. Um, the range on those CBs, if you have an, uh, an antenna up on your house or you're in a tree near your house, you can get 20 miles. Um, realistically, without adding an, a linear amplifier, which would be illegal, you could get five miles you know ideally um, CB is really a great way to go if you just want to keep your uh, communications options open absolutely perfect for uh, preppers if you don't want to get a license you don't want to go th if you don't want to get a, a ham radio license there are possibilities other than amateur radio for comms, uh, CB being the top, uh, in my opinion, because you can get fairly, fairly far communications, especially when you're doing what's called shooting skip. Uh, shooting skip is more appropriately it is atmospheric ducting. During times of high sunspot activity, it is possible to communicate hundreds if not a thousand miles for a short duration. However, do not count on that all the time because it doesn't happen all the time. Again, it's at the whim of the uh, atmosphere and sunspot cycle. We're in cycle, cycle 25 now, um, so could you? Yeah, you could get that kind of range. Should you plan on that? No, I wouldn't. Uh, what else? La, 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 la. CB, FRS, MERS, these, are all, these all should be part of your communications plan. Have... And have options that you can use. Amateur radio operators sometimes, and I am one of those people, who will monitor 
Channel 3 on FRS, CB, and um, MERS. And if there is any traffic to pass along, I will relay, relay that along the um, amateur radio frequencies. Not all amateur radio operators do this. I don't know why, but it's a personal choice. I would rather have somebody have the uh, oh my god, what am I trying to say? It's like 6 o'clock in the morning. Uh, capabilities of getting information to and from so that if they're in, an, if they're in a, a situation where they need help, we can get it to them. So again, your comms plan should include FRS, MERS, and Citizens Band Radio. And if you choose to get your licenses for GMRS and or amateur radio, those are going to be next. I'm going to do a video on those probably this Saturday, I'm not sure, depending, you know. So, again, CB is a great, great comms um, idea, especially if you're a prepper and you don't want the license to get an amateur radio. Get a CB. They're absolutely fine. There is absolutely no problem whatsoever with using citizens band radio if you and your group are using cb then you need to pick a channel use that channel specifically for your group communications um, and monitor channel three because you know that's the what was it Channel 3 is the Prepper CB network, and that's on AM, so if you have that capability, you'd be able to reach out and talk to other preppers in your immediate area. So, again, get a CB, you'll be fine, okay? This is K0MRD, your radio prepper. I'm out for now.